Hello, this video describes my experimental MIDI device for playing chords with one finger. It seems I lack the talent, patience and commitment to become an accomplished musician, so I made this to assist me noodle around when I'm trying to find a nice chord progression. It's made with and for Ableton Live, but it's only what you might call a beta version since it's simply a conceptual hack that I knocked up and got carried away with. I don't even know how much I'll really use it, but since it exists, I thought I might as well share it. You can download it from my GitHub repository. I use a 49 key keyboard, and therefore I wanted to fit everything within four octaves. The device totally perverts normal keyboard usage because chords are mapped to keys in a completely arbitrary fashion. Nevertheless, it's a simple system, and once you get used to the layout, it's easy to use. Indeed, part of the fun for me is not really worrying about the identity of the keys too much. The whole set of keys comprise a family, as it were, of chords that are in some way related, so you can semi-randomly improvise and have a decent chance of sounding, to your friends at least, like you've made some progress with your jazz piano lessons. Not really, but in combination with Ableton Live's piano roll, it should be easier to knock up some nice harmonies to get your new track started. By default, it's centred around the key of C minor, Aeolian mode, that is. Or, if you prefer, E flat major, the Ionian mode. Why C minor? Well, I don't really know. It rather happened by accident. I was composing a tune and I got a decent sounding chord progression, but it seems I was using chords from more than one key. For somebody without formal training in music theory, I was perplexed. I had no idea what key my song was in. Every single white key was represented, which suggested C major or A minor. Mind you, I didn't think my song had a sad vibe but it was also using three black keys, i.e. three flats, which then pointed to E flat major or C minor. So for now, let's roll with C minor. Now, although I was using the six chords represented in the circle of fifths for C minor, which of course excludes the less than agreeable D diminished chord, I was also using other chords so I believe my tune was indulging in the practice of what they call modal interchange, whereby songs in a given key can borrow chords from a corresponding key. For example, C major songs might use chords from C minor, or vice versa perhaps. So what we have in this device is essentially a group of six C minor chords and a group of six C major chords. We're embracing some additional chords from the circle of fifths. But in addition, the device includes four other groups of six variations of the main chords. Minor seventh, add nine, sus two, and major seventh. It's a limited range, arbitrarily chosen for their level of pleasantness to my own set of ears, which remain blissfully ignorant in their musical outlook. Regarding the six chords for C minor, they are contained across the major and minor groups in the lower octave mapping, but they are, you will observe, not in sequence and not adjacent. You just need to remember their positions, all part of the fun. The six groups of six chord types thus occupy three octaves. At the top end, in the fourth octave, I've mapped eight more keys to the C minor diatonic scale. Notes C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and another C. Note this is the one place I've got an explicit D note. This eight note group is for extra noodling to add a melody to go with the chords. And actually, some random transposition of these notes can occur just to infuse some variety. Now, of course, you don't have to stick to C minor. The device allows you to transpose to any key you like, in which case you just ignore the names of the chords and notes shown in the diagram, because they will be meaningless. Although the keys are mapped across 44 keys, the notes played will be from the same general register. 
That is, the keys mapped to the upper octave do not, as such, play higher notes than the keys mapped to the lower octaves, if you see what I mean. Also be aware that all the chords throw in an additional bass root note played an octave lower. To use the device, just drop it onto a MIDI track and add an instrument after it. So I can just play a few notes randomly and some of it might sound okay. If you want to confirm what chords are emanating from the device, I highly recommend using this Max for Live device called Harmo Chord J74. If you do a Google search for it, you'll see that it's a free download. It's an excellent tool I use all the time, and all credit to its creator Fabrizio Poche. Please excuse my uncertain pronunciation. However, Max for Live requires the sweet version of Ableton Live. Here's a demo MIDI clip whereby single notes on a piano roll produce chords when played through the device. Obviously, the notes shown in the MIDI do not reflect the chord notes actually being played. The pitch macro knob allows you to transpose everything to a different key. As already mentioned, a different key means disregarding the names of the chords and notes shown in the diagram. That's why something like the Harmo Chord J74 Max for Live device is so helpful. The Bass Velocity On knob offers some velocity control. Here, don't confuse Bass, B-A-S-E, with Bass, B-A-S-S. -S. When Bass Velocity On is set to zero, assuming your instrument is velocity sensitive, then notes will play as loudly as you hit the keys. A non-zero value for bass velocity on means that the loudness of the notes is dictated by the two macros bass velocity and random velocity amount. Bass velocity sets a nominal velocity for all notes. In conjunction with this, random velocity amount dials in some velocity variation randomness for each note either side of the bass velocity. With no random velocity amount, all notes play at the same volume. A high value causes large random differences in note volume between individual notes. The Auto Transpose macro offers three types of articulation. When set between 0 and 31, all chords are played in conventional order up the keyboard, root, third, fifth, etc. When set between 32 and 63, certain chords, that is, those toward the upper end of each chord group, are subject to a fixed transposition of some notes an octave downwards to keep them in the same general note register. When the auto transpose macro is set to 64 or above, some automatic random transposition takes place to add a measure of spontaneity to the notes played. Thus, pressing the same key repeatedly can result in a few notes occasionally being played an octave higher or lower. Finally, the bass only macro control, when set to a non-zero value, causes only the root bass note to be played. This provides an easy way to use a single MIDI clip 
to play both a chord sequence and a bass line. For example, in channel 1 I have another MIDI clip, which is a variation of the one used earlier. The notes represent a chord progression. There is nothing else on this channel. The second channel has a piano. I'm using the Berlin Concert Grand from Native Instruments. This channel also has a couple of instances of FM8, Factory Presets Fatty and Land of Plenty, both of which I rather like. All this is preceded by an instance of the one finger chord device. Now we want to receive MIDI from channel one. Channel 3 has bass and sub-bass instruments. It also has an instance of the one finger chord device. Note, however, that the bass only macro is non-zero, so it will play only the bass root note of the MIDI chord coming in. I've also got an arpeggiator inserted to give me a bouncing octave bass line. On the main bass, I also have a delay effect, and I'm using an instance of the Max for Live LFO MIDI device to fade it in and out. It all helps to add more interest to the bass line. We also want the bass channel to get its MIDI from channel 1. Thus, we've got one source of MIDI providing for two instrument channels. Now we can play about with this and see what it all sounds like. Right, so that's all well and good, but if we want to enhance it, we could probably do with full, proper MIDI for all the chords. To get that, we need to record it, so let's create a couple of new MIDI channels. These new channels will receive their MIDI from the synth and bass channels respectively. Then we arm both channels. I've got a two bar counting, so now I can just quickly start recording the two new MIDI clips. The new clips now contain full MIDI data, proper chords and everything. We can even see here how we have some velocity variations thanks to the random velocity amount set in the one finger chord device. The bass MIDI reflects the arpeggiated bass line. We can now transfer these new clips back to the source channels. Delete the temporary MIDI channels since we no longer need them. For the instrument channels, we set MIDI from to all ints, so we no longer receive MIDI from elsewhere. 
and we change the monitor setting to auto. On both channels, we will now disable the one finger cord device. On the base channel, we also switch off the arpeggiator. So now it should still all sound the same, even though we're not using the one finger cord device. Now you have complete freedom to mess about with individual MIDI notes and spruce up your chord progression. Right, there you have it. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Cheers.